Shocking news from Los Angeles tonight. NBC News has confirmed pop superstar Michael Jackson is dead at the age of 50. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Good evening. Every American generation has its icons in the world of entertainment. Michael Jackson has been one of the best-known stars on this planet for the last several decades. On this night, when we were preparing a remembrance of Farrah Fawcett, suddenly word arrived from Southern California that Jackson had been rushed to the hospital. There were grave reports about his condition. And now this, confirmation tonight that he has died. A lot will be said about Michael Jackson as we learn more about this story. He was incredibly talented, a child star who was an adult with deeply troubles, deep troubles and physical and mental health issues. We'll begin our coverage of this still breaking story with Lester Holt here with me in our New York studios. Again, Lester, this came first confirmation, LA Times, then Associated Press, and now NBC News is confirming this word. And they've been reporting all afternoon about the sequence of events, apparently about 12.30, Brian, Pacific Time, 3.36 uh, Eastern Time. Uh, uh, L.A. City Fire Department paramedics responded to the Bel Air Mansion where Michael Jackson had been staying. He'd been rehearsing for a series of concerts set to begin a comeback concerts in London in July. Uh, the paramedics got to the residence, found him. Apparently there was no pulse. He was not breathing. They administered uh, CPR at the scene, then took him about six minutes away to what you're looking at now. This is the UCLA Medical Center in nearby Westwood. Uh, some family had begun to gather there. The press, of course, gathered, and then we learned just a short time ago in these uh, latest reports that uh, Michael Jackson uh, did die. Apparently he never regained consciousness. They were not able to uh, reestablish a pulse. Uh, these, uh, this mansion he was staying at in Bel Air apparently had been rented in preparation for this comeback concert. We learned in March when they announced that concert that questions had come up about his health at the time. The promoters said he had undergone a four and a half hour battery of physical tests and he had checked out okay at the time, Brian. He was apparently, according to one report, working out with the bodybuilder Lou Ferrigno of late. MSNBC is reporting that he had expressed a desire to do so-called two-a-days, two-a-day rehearsals for this upcoming tour. Uh, we go now to NBC's Michael Oku, who is outside the hospital where all of this took place today. Michael? Brian, good evening. If you didn't read anything about what had happened here, just walking by, you would know that something very serious is happening here at the UCLA Medical Center. Choppers are buzzing overhead. Crowds are assembling all along the streets and the sidewalks here. And the news uh, media has arrived in spades. Uh, I can also tell you that uh, cones have been laid out on the street, those familiar orange cones that are used to redirect traffic. Very clear that something serious happening inside. Again, NBC News confirming that legendary singer Michael Jackson has in fact died of cardiac arrest. Uh, what we are learning at this hour is that uh, fire uh, uh, personnel, uh, that is responders, went to his home at about 12.30 this afternoon in response to a 911 call from that home and found Mr. Jackson reportedly without a pulse. They tried to revive him, they were unable to, and rushed him here to the UCLA Medical Center, where again, Brian, I can tell you why we have not talked to officials here inside on the ground at least, clearly the scene out outside here, while not one of complete bedlam, very much of a crowd assembling to a very serious news event. Brian? Michael Oku at UCLA Medical Center at this hour. He was a shooting star, Michael Jackson was, in the American pop music scene, including American popular culture as a whole. As we've been reporting, he was hoping for a career comeback, including dozens of sold-out shows in London. Now our own Peter Alexander has a look back at the life and times of this very troubled but extraordinary performer. From the beginning, you couldn't take your eyes off him. His older brothers who made up the rest of the Jackson 5 sang and moved, but Michael, the youngest and clearly the prodigy, was the one who moved you. Under the tutelage of producer Quincy Jones, Jackson later evolved as a solo performer, which redefined him for his already adoring public. Fans also saw and seemed to like his unmistakable style, the military costumes, and that sequined glove. Just beat it, beat it. 
1982 album Thriller won eight Grammys, made Jackson's Moonwalk a signature, and gave him the stature to call on any collaborator he chose. But just as quickly as his star rose, Jackson's eccentricities became more clear, including the changing color of his skin. Jackson also turned a California ranch into a child's fantasy called Neverland. But in 1993, a 13-year-old boy claimed that Jackson had molested him. The case was settled, with Jackson never admitting any guilt. These statements about me are totally false. Jackson was married twice, first to Lisa Marie Presley, Elvis's daughter, and three children after that marriage failed to remove the suspicions fanned by an unquenchable tabloid fire. He fed that fire too, dangling his baby from a German hotel balcony, testifying woozily in a bizarre court appearance, telling a filmmaker there was nothing wrong with sharing his bedroom with children, including one child who in 2003 made another accusation that a boozy Jackson had molested him, and this time said so on the witness stand. Michael Jackson had become the biggest star with truly international status ever brought to trial on a serious felony charge, but still, he was celebrated by a worldwide following and will forever be ranked among the greatest music artists of all time. Peter Alexander, NBC News, New York. Again, if you're just joining us on Nightly News tonight, we're still reacting to this incredible news. The sudden word out of Los Angeles now confirmed by NBC News, Michael Jackson dead at the age of 50. Lester Holt here with us in our studios. Uh, Lester, Peter touched on this aspect of his life, kind of the obvious, and that is the troubles. He virtually uh, changed his entire physical appearance in terms of physical features, skin color. There, there was his private life and on and on. As you were leading in, I was watching the box over your shoulder, picture after picture, and you see it transform right before your eyes. People saw it. People talked about the plastic surgery. Those things they noted, and it became kind of a, well, that Michael's a little weird. Uh, it was only after that, that 2005 child molestation case that I think it all came into a different kind of focus. He would then go on to become this re recluse, and that's why it was such a big deal when he announced several months ago he was going to do this, this comeback concert and try to repair his last album, comeback was was an utter flop and at the same time his transformation his contributions to american pop culture from the glove to moonwalking the thriller video comes to mind we we were all talking before the newscast singing the songs and realized we all know the words to these songs brian thriller though i think was the defining album 1982 this album comes out if you remember mtv was just getting off the ground the whole music video thing well he comes out and essentially makes movies of music videos no longer just the performers on a stage strumming their guitar he, he really jump-started the genre. As you mentioned, the, the, the dance, uh, the, the, the moonwalk, the glove, all this. That one album uh, produced seven number one hits. It was an amazing moment for him. Uh, and this is the guy that popped on. We're the same age. Ten year, ten year, I remember being a 10-year-old kid watching this 10-year-old kid on TV one night, and it would become this overnight sensation and go on, and we'd continue to watch his career blossom. Say nothing of the fact that he first arrived on our radar as the youngest member, of course, of the, uh, of the Jackson 5. Lester will be talking about this some more. Uh, this Michael Jackson news follows the sad news we received earlier today, what was going to be a major story on this broadcast tonight as it is that actress and icon Farrah Fawcett died this morning after a long battle with cancer. Also in Los Angeles, that report tonight from NBC's Lee Cowan. There are all the obvious ways to remember Farrah Fawcett, starting with that iconic poster every teenage boy had in his room. Of course, there was also her golden halo, the locks that made her the perfect angel for Charlie. What denomination are you, little lady? 35, 24, 35. With that, the cover girl became the talk of the TV nation. You are more than famous. But those images stand in stark contrast to these, from a documentary she produced. Her signature hair, gone. Her wincing in pain. Pictures she wanted the world to see, determined to fight the cancer that eventually killed her. I used to wonder how people who were very sick with a terminal diagnosis, could get up and go on with their lives. It was that stoic approach to the inevitable that her fans remembered today. Her co-stars, too. Cheryl Ladd called her incredibly brave. Jacqueline Smith honored her courage and strength. Farrell Fawcett was born a Texas girl. 
In college, she had frat boys lining up for a look. They liked what they saw, and so did Hollywood. Ultra bright has more whiteness. Her smile launched TV commercials, and the rest was history. For my life. Her appearance in the burning bed about abused women earned her the first of three Emmy nominations. She was rarely out of the spotlight, even with the men in her life. She married Lee Majors, the $6 million man, but that ended in 1982. She then began a lifelong relationship with actor Ryan O'Neill, who was at her side through the chemo, through the surgeries, and the recurring diagnoses. We won. We'll win. We will. He said recently the ordeal had brought them closer together. He even suggested the two might marry if she was well enough. But that day never came. This morning, O'Neill left St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica alone. He and Farah did have a son, Redmond who made a touching but Dr. brief Farrell appearance in the star's documentary. He was serving time on a drug charge, but was granted a few moments back in April to say goodbye. But he remained in jail last night, unable to see his mother's final moments. Instead, Farrah Fawcett bid farewell to him in her journal. When one day you wake up, and realize that I'm gone. I will still be there. America's favorite angel, dead at 62. Lee Cowan, NBC News, Los Angeles. And before we get too much further, we want to remind you that on both of the deaths we are covering tonight, Farrah Fawcett and Michael Jackson, there will be a special two-hour Dateline broadcast on this NBC station, 9 to 11, uh, that's 9, 8 central, two hours, hosted by our colleague Ann Curry. Lester Holt remains here with us in the studio. Lester, we started the broadcast tonight by saying that every American generation has its icons. Uh, they come along, uh, they rise to public prominence for, for various reasons. Two in one day, gone. Two, I looked up and, and saw Farrah Fawcett on the screen today as, as it flashed across MSNBC. That one, of course, we had anticipated, knowing her condition. Michael Jackson, we didn't. But what do they have in common? They were both, as you say, icons who uh, transcended almost their professions. Yes, Michael Jackson was a musician, uh, Farrah Fawcett an actress, but they were more than that. They were uh, a generation identified with them, or in, in terms of they were, they were part of our growing up. Uh, Farrah Fawcett, the famous poster, of course, that so many young teenage boys remember very well, and, and Michael Jackson, uh, the, the music that really kind of defined actually multiple generations. The man they called the yeah. king of pop. We will continue our coverage of tonight's breaking story along with some of the rest of today's news when Nightly News continues on a Thursday night right after this. NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams is the number one television news source in America, making sense of it all. We'll continue in a short while our coverage of tonight's breaking story, the death of Michael Jackson. First, we must update you on some of the other news of this day, which brings us to the latest big ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court. This one involving just how far public schools can go to enforce those so-called zero-tolerance policies that have become so popular. And the question, have they gone too far with our own children? In a case involving a 13-year-old girl, the court today put new limits on a very controversial practice, strip searches. The story tonight from our justice correspondent, Pete Williams. The ruling is a victory for Savannah Redding, now a college student. When she was just 13, she was subjected to a humiliating strip search at her middle school in Arizona. Suspected of passing around prescription strength ibuprofen, each pill no stronger than two common Advil tablets. I think I was kind of in... We'll get this term's final decisions Monday. The court will review a reverse discrimination ruling by Sonia Sotomayor, nominated to replace Justice Souter. Pete Williams, NBC News at the Supreme Court. An update on a story we've been following for days, the latest on Iran. A new show of defiance toward the U.S. there today. President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the supposed winner of those recent elections, accused President Obama today of interfering in Iran's affairs, and he's demanding the United States president apologize. Meanwhile, the leader of the opposition, Mousavi, says he is not backing down. 
We'll take a break. When we come back, the latest on Governor Mark Sanford of South Carolina, and of course, tonight's news, the death of Michael Jackson. We're back and now to today's developments and what was our lead story last night, South Carolina, where Governor Mark Sanford stay out of the public eye today, hold up with his family as some of his own party leaders and no small number of his constituents said he should leave office. Our update from NBC's Mark Potter. In a statement today, Governor Sanford said while on this official Commerce Department trade mission last summer to South America, he met with his mistress in Argentina and would now reimburse the state for that part of the trip. The day after his public confession at the state capitol, the big question is whether Mark Sanford can still remain as governor of South Carolina. Even fellow Republicans aren't sure. We simply don't know. We're, we're getting information, and as people see the light of what's, what's transpired, they'll be making the right decisions. Democratic Representative Todd Rutherford is already calling. No plans to resign. Mark Potter, NBC News, Columbia, South Carolina. Story of you, a story many of you already know. Day three of a brutal heat wave, and now there's been a death related to extreme heat and humidity. Officials say a 61 year old woman from just outside St. Louis died of heat stroke. Heat index readings were in the upper 90s and 100s throughout the central part of the country. Forecasters say the extreme temperatures not expected to break until Sunday. In a moment, we're back with an update of tonight's story. The news from Los Angeles, Michael Jackson is dead at the age of 50. As we have mentioned this evening, our lead story tonight, the king of pop has died. Michael Jackson, dead at the age of 50. Death was apparently declared at UCLA Medical Center, where our own Michael Oku is standing by outside. Michael? Brian, there seems to be a collective sense of shock here as passers-by continue to gather here by what appears to be the hundreds, many of them, including the uh, media that's assembled here, roving with their cameras, some of them taking uh, shots through their cell phones, documenting what clearly they believe will be remembered as a major historical event. All of this happening, as we understand, a press conference is scheduled to take way sometime soon, we assume, uh, by, uh, by UCLA medical staffers. Brian? We'll assume that crowd will grow in size as the evening goes along. Michael Oku in L.A. Lester Holt here with us in New York. Lester, I'm looking at some of the reaction coming in. Uh, John Landis, the director, saying despite his gifts, Michael Jackson remains a tragic figure. Uh, Quincy Jones, the legendary producer, I've lost my little brother today. Part of my soul has gone with him. This will go on and on throughout the evening. It will go on, and it's interesting watching those crowds outside the UCLA Medical Center this evening. Reminds me of the crowds we saw for Michael Jackson in life. Remember the pictures when he would visit Japan or anywhere in the world of thousands of young people uh, that would come out even during his trial during his in trial. 2005. Despite the, the, uh, the severity of the charges he was facing, child molestation, people came out to see him. He was this icon. And, and what you'll hear in the days to come, was he bigger than Elvis? Uh, was he the greatest entertainer? What did he, was he truly the king of pop? What we do know is he did bridge uh, a divide in pop music between soul and pop and and and, it, and that probably happened in 1982 in which he brought the two together all right lester holt here with us as we remember tonight michael jackson after word of his death this evening at the age of 50 that's going to do it for our broadcast tonight thank you for being with us and a reminder ann curry will be back on the air with a special two-hour edition of dateline tonight on this nbc station that's at 9 8 central I'm Brian Williams. We hope to see you back here for tomorrow evening's broadcast. Good night.